a gear review on all of the stuff that's in my pack and Tahoe is not going to help. <laughs> so this is my Palante V2. It's a 16 inch um, 31 liter pack and I really love it. It does not hold a lot of stuff obviously at 37 liters. It forces me toward ultralight which is my desire. Um, but I have to be really, really cheesy about what I include. So this is everything that I'm including. Everything that you see is my world for five months on the PCT. I'm just gonna run through real quick what it contains. So on the outside, there are two pouches. And this one has my mini tripod. When my husband's not holding the camera, I'll need this on the trail to film. And it's awesome and light and um, fits there well. This is the Garmin in Reach. This is the Mini, which is all that I need. I can text my husband and he can text me back any time of day, even when I don't have phone signal. So that's really important. It's also got an SOS button on there if I do have a crisis. So on the sides, there are two pouches that will hold two smart water bottles. This side also has a strap, and so I've got my gossamer gear, sun umbrella in there. Also great for rain, not great for wind. Um, and then there's a little strap that will hold that on, or um, I've heard the ice pick can be used there. It's a handy strap. On the back, this is where I put my butt pad. So this was a much larger uh, Thermalite z light pad, but it doesn't have a lot of R factor, and so it's not that useful as a sleep system piece, but I really love having it for a butt pad along the trail. So that's where that goes under that strap. And then it just unhooks right there. I'm at a beach that's super windy right now, so hopefully the sound quality is okay. Um, I'll try to block it as much as I can. In this pouch, I keep my Seenock 3 liter water pouch. That's for in the desert whenever I need more water than just the 4 liters. This gives me a capacity of up to 7. Sorry, my nose is running today. Um, welcome to the trail. So I also have a Seenock cold soak pouch that I love, but I'm not bringing because it is a little bit heavier than the Talenti jar that everybody talks about so much. So this is what I'll use for my cold soak. I tried it the other day and discovered that after you eat, you can swish it with a little bit of water. It's easier than it was with the Seenock pouch, unfortunately. Um, and then you just drink it for a leave no trace, which sounds disgusting, but it turns out it actually did just taste like water. All right, now I've got some um, snacks for the trail in there, which I can't have because I'm doing a fast with my husband this month, um, and more water. So this is my Sawyer filter. Everybody pretty much knows those. I haven't tried one yet, but that's what I'm told I should have. So. I will sure be learning. The last thing in this pouch back here is my ground sheet. And it goes under my tent, but just under the sleep section portion, which is very narrow. I have a Dan Durston X-Mid one person tent, which I love. And I will set it up later and let you see what that looks like. Uh, this is actually what they call an elephant skin in the construction world. Um, and I washed it a few times just like you would the Tyvek and I like the weight of it, I like the feel of it, and it's not super crinkly. So that can go in this pouch too. Now this also has clipped to the carabiner a P-Rag, which is soft on one side, waterproof on the other. You can hook it to the back of your pack and it will evaporate whatever you've used it for. And then this is called the P-Style. It's a pee funnel for women so that we can pee conveniently like men do. And in this pouch, I also keep a mini bidet. Um, I've never used one, but I'm told that they're awesome. So since it fits easily into this funnel, I'm just going to go ahead and take it along and see what all the hoopla is about. Keep a little bit of toilet paper tucked in here too. I'll have wet wipes as well. And then this is my... Um, trowel for digging cat holes 
which is probably my least favorite thing that I'm looking well and I'm not looking forward to on trail I can't imagine having good aim with that sort of thing but I will get good at it won't I all right so this you can clip this to the pack I didn't like the way that it was swinging around so I just tuck it in here all right let's dive inside oh on the bottom there's also a nice big flexi pouch just like on the back and that's where I plan to keep food I don't have a lot of extra space in here so my room for food is minimal but I'm planning to be a minimalist when it comes to food all right so inside that just opens like that and then on top I keep the things that can get wet it's not a waterproof pouch completely it's water resistant um, so this is the exterior of my tent obviously it could rain so that can get wet this is my rain jacket. It's also going to double as a wind jacket. I just got it at REI. It's super light. I've worn it and I have found that since I can't hike in my down puffy, um, I can hike in this and it really does keep me warm. All right, then I have a Palante pack liner. It's super light. The pack with the liner is just barely over a pound altogether. So in here I keep the things that I want to keep waterproof. I want to keep dry. This is the interior of my tent system and I'll show you what that looks like later. And then this is my puffy um, pouch so this is how large it would be when it's in here right now it's on me because it's chilly outside and I'm at camp I would not hike in this because I don't want sweat to get it wet but I can sleep in it and I can wear it in camp this is the Montbell Mirage parka and it's super light and super warm Okay, the next thing is my sleeping quilt. It's the first time I've ever had a sleeping quilt, but everybody who uses them swears by them. They have a little less weight because the back is removed from what is basically a sleeping bag. Um, when the down is compressed, it doesn't do you any good, so they just remove it. And But mine is so fluffy and so warm, I added features that it takes up a lot of space, more than I have in this small pack. So I use this Sea to Summit event compression sack it's also waterproof i like that i have a double waterproof protection for my quilt it's the one thing i really really don't want to get wet so that just opens up expands a good bit and then you unclip it and it comes right out So just a few comments on this quilt. It'll take some getting used to sleeping with it. Um, I did found, find that I had cold spots. Uh, I was sleeping in shorts and I didn't particularly care for that. I probably will always have my legs covered from now on just so I don't even get the sensation that air is hitting me. Uh, I got the closed foot box to be really warm. There are other options. You can get a drawstring bottom which you can stuff with a sock and it's lighter but I wanted to be really sure I'd be warm. Uh, I also got the tapered foot box, which as it turns out, I don't love. I didn't think that I was someone to toss and turn when I sleep, but I felt a little confined. So if I had it to do all over again, and I had the space in a pack, which I don't, uh, I would get the non-tapered version and just give my legs a little bit of room to move. Uh, as you can see, this is not the front opening, this is the back opening. There are clips to close it up around you and your um, sleep pad. And if you do get hot, you can open that up and treat it like a quilt on the upper part. It also has a collar, which you had the option of having or not. I chose it because I like that I can cuddle it up right against my face. There is no hood. Uh, so I use the hood of my parka when I sleep. I don't plan to have a beanie that would just be extra weight. So there's that. One of my favorite things. Okay, and then I have the Climate Sleeping Pad. 
comes with a little pouch, but that's just a little bit of extra weight. So, you know, we eliminate every ounce that we can. Um, it was not difficult to inflate. It's got an R factor of 4.4, which is really good. And deflating it was not a big deal. So wrapping it back up and packing it away is not bad. When I woke up the first night that I used it, it was flat. So wasn't thrilled about that, but there's a really strong possibility that I did it wrong. It was the first time I had used it. I was really tired when I went to bed. And so I'm gonna try it again and hoping for the best. All right, and then there's just one pair of underwear, an extra pair of Njinji socks, and an extra pair of Darn Tough socks in case I need a little extra warmth, and that's all that will be in there. Uh, what I wear to hike is my sports bra, a pair of ex officio underwear, my hiking skirt, which is a purple rain hiking skirt. I like it because it has really nice pockets and so I'll carry my phone in one and my charger pack in the other side it's got a little inner pocket as well where you could put your money and credit card if you're going into town um, it's really cold out here so I forgot my thermal layers I'll have my thermal layers for sleep and for hiking and so I just threw on my rain pants these are my wind pants and rain pants combined and I'm warm. I was cold and now I'm warm. So that's the way it's supposed to work. Um, I'm wearing ultra shoes and I love them. I know not everybody is into zero drop, but I have flat feet and they are a godsend because with those paired with my Njinji toe socks, I haven't even had a hint of a blister. I don't even think about my feet, which is fantastic. Uh, and then I have on some dirty girl gaiters to keep the rocks and sand out of my shoes so let's see as far as shirts go I have just a, a, a dry fit shirt and then a um, merino wool sweater and so those I can hike in because those will wick water it's been a really efficient system so far when I get cold I throw on a couple of layers and voila I'm really comfortable so I haven't had any excruciatingly cold nights yet. I'm real curious to see how my tent does in various conditions, but I'm really happy with my system. Um, kind of all sprawled out now, but that's what I have. If you have any questions, feel free to, to shoot me some questions. You'll, I mean, you'll find me on Instagram at PCT2020. Tell me no. Okay, I cut, forgot to go through the contents of my fanny pack. It's a light AF fanny pack. It's the XL. I love the size. I know it probably seems kind of big. It's two and a half pounds when it's loaded, but it carries the stuff that I need. So these are the medical gloves that you saw me wearing earlier. I found that they keep my hands warm when I'm not absolutely freezing. And then I can layer them under regular gloves if I need more. My plan is to have these and then some glove liners and then rain mittens on top. That will be my glove system. All right, so there's a few more. I wear glasses when I don't have my contacts in, so I'll have those with me. I am planning to bring contacts on trail, even though I know my hands will be dirty. This is a little Seenock cup, which just squashes down to nothing, weighs practically nothing, and if someone decides they want to share their beer with me, I want to be ready. This is my mosquito net, and I've been really happy to have it already. It has gotten some use. I have a little bungee. This won't be going with me, but I would like to explore whether there are bungee carabiners because it helps me if I just want to take off my merino wool sweater, if I start to get warm or take off my rain jacket, I can just clip them to the outside of my bag instead of having to stop and open my pack and refit everything. This is something else I got from Seenock. It's just a little stiff um, carabiner cord. I used it once to 
secure my bear can. Give me a little extra length on the cord on the back of my pack to secure the bear can. Um, so I, I'm going to keep it just in case I need it for random needs. These are the cords necessary for my electronics, which include my charger pack, mine is 21,000. I'm told that's excessive. I don't believe that to be true because at some points we'll have to go days without recharging and I don't ever want to lose my gut hooks app. This is my Tokes um, spoon and it's awesome. <laughs> I keep fireballs in here because those are my guilty pleasure. I also have to have lip screen because my lips blister. I'll probably take Lysine along as well um, just because it helps if you start feeling like you've got a blister. This is a hand warmer that I was given as a gift and it might seem a little heavy and excessive but I'm not carrying a stove. I'm only going to cold soak and so I'm going to be really happy for that heat when I have no way to get any in any other way. So it recharges with the USB and it gets fiery hot. These will not be going with me on the PCT, but I really love them for my practice hikes. They're just wireless earbuds contacts. This is my nightlight. It's all wrapped up so I won't unwrap it, but um, it's great. It's got uh, let's see if I can click the right lights. Yeah, there. So it has varying light strengths. And it also has a red light that gets brighter or that flashes. That'll be super in campsites when you don't want to wake everybody up when you have to go pee. Um, let's see. Is there anything else in here? Lip stuff. So yeah, there's a few. And, and these, you know those little silica packets that come in and wick moisture and things that you receive in the mail. I've just been saving those and I'm going to toss them in my backpack. I don't see how they could hurt and maybe they'll be helpful in removing moisture. Okay, so these are just a few weights that I wanted to mention to you. My tent is two pounds. It's a Dan Durston X-Mid one person. My climate sleeping pad is 1.2 pounds. My Thermarest Z-Lite, which is just my cut down butt pad, is 4.4 ounces. My Palante V2 pack and liner is one pound, one and a half ounces. My Montbell Parka Mirage is 12.5 ounces. My quilt is 1.9 pounds, so almost two pounds. I know that's a lot for a quilt but the warmth is way worth it to me. Um, my fanny pack full is two and a half pounds. So my base weight is 14.4 pounds without a few things that I still have to tuck in. First aid, toilet paper, wet wipes, that sort of thing, and food and water.
Okay, so I just want to go over the things that I really like about this tent, um, which is basically everything. It's only a couple of pounds at the very most. It separates into inside and outside. So in the desert, I can just set up the outside to have some shelter. Um, in rain, I can set up the outside and then crawl inside and add the inside to avoid the rain. I like that it's got these vents right here. So this little bar comes out, attaches just like this. And it really helps to have um, the vents for condensation reduction or condensation control. There's one on each side. Those are super easy. These are also really good access for you to insert the trekking pole to get it into place. There's nice grommets and reinforced areas for where your trekking poles are gonna go. Inside, I love that you have this spacious vestibule right here where you can put your pack. Um, you only need a ground cover the size of your sleeping area, which I really like. Um, you don't have to worry about grommets because it's not attached that way. It's attached up here at the at the roof with little clips. So I like the clips. They are easy on, easy off. So those just snap right in. Um, let's see. So when I slept in here, I did notice just a little bit of wetness behind my pillow in the morning, but you're on the ground and I didn't have a ground sheet at the time. So that's why that happened. But any condensation was on this outer sleeve. I didn't have any issue in the mesh area. And it's a bathtub floor, which I really like. Um, so that helps too if it rains. So yeah, everything about it, I just love. It's up and down, super easy. Um, I think that's covering everything. So... Thumbs up for Dan Durston, X-Med, one person.